Hi, teammates. Welcome to The Well, the Live Well podcast, the podcast that connects you to all the topics to meet you along your well-being journey. I'm one of your hosts, Jen Collings. And I'm Seth Christopher. Welcome to The Well. Teammates, welcome to The Well. We are in the month of September. We are just marching through 2021, Seth. We are. We are in the last little stretch here as we get ready for all the fun things about fall. So September, here we go. Ah, you said fall. That's so fun. You're right. I can't wait. We have an exciting show. I feel like we say that every time, but I think all of our shows are pretty exciting. We might be biased, but we might also be telling the truth. That's right. So today we're going to talk about alternative forms of exercise. Uh, the Live Well calendar is all about alternative medicine this month. So we thought, why not talk about some alternative forms of exercise? And so what are we going to focus on, Seth? Well, we're not going to focus on buys and tries, legs. So we're really going to focus on you know, giving some different ideas about physical activity, but also, you know, we're going to try and step away from some of the traditional prescription that we've we've often talked about here at the well, and and, and sort of expand that conversation to include some of these alternative forms of exercise that a lot of people might be familiar with, and then some it may not be. So we'll really spend some time digging in, talking about um, some of these additional types of exercise. Great. Let's go ahead and get started. Hit me with your fast facts. All right. Let's do it. Fast fact, you're probably ready to switch things up and get back to exercising as usual, right? In an Orange Theory basement burnout survey conducted this year, 70% of Americans that are exercising regularly said they missed their pre-COVID workout routines like classes, gyms, and the like. Interestingly, Jen, almost 85% of these respondents indicated they were eager to make positive progress with their physical activity. Now, with the COVID world still a bit of an unknown as we move into the fall, uh, maybe we need to keep pursuing, pursuing alternative forms of activity as well. Fast fact, practicing yoga can have many potential benefits to your health. Research has shown positive associations between performing yoga and stress reduction, lower blood pressure, and improved physical performance like flexibility, strength, balance, and coordination. Fast fact, you may think yoga is a new fad that involves cool clothes, hip terms, and a bottle of kombucha, but it's actually probably the first fitness fad ever known. In fact, it's been suggested by many that the practice of yoga is almost 5,000 years old. Jen, let's make a 5,000 year old long story short. Yoga is a practice that's not going anywhere and it's been around for a reason. 5,000 years old. That's crazy. I didn't realize it was that old. I know it had been around a while, but that's pretty old. Well, speaking of being around a while, let's, let's, let's hang out here and let's have a conversation about some of these alternative forms of exercise, specifically calling out yoga. So let's dive deeper into the well. So Seth, we talk a lot about exercise on this show. We have discussed the goal of getting at least 150 minutes of activity a week, plus those two days of strength training. And we encourage everyone listening to be active doing something. I think when our teammates hear that, hear that, they hear our recommendation, they think of your traditional walking, running, weightlifting, you know, just that, that regular stuff. But as your facts have really spelled out, there are some really great alternatives that can help us meet our goals in a different and arguably more fun way. First off, our, our listeners probably are thinking that running, walking, and lifting weights are the only way to get to that 150 minutes because that's a lot of what we talk about. And to set the stage for today's conversation and get to give a broader context for, for why this is an important conversation is, we talk about the 150 minutes because at a population level, that's what we know works. That's what the the, the research has shown. Um, and we have always tried to plug, hey, 
just do a little bit more today than you did you did yesterday do a little bit more tomorrow than you did today in any way shape form or fashion that you can and you know what we'd like to say is yes we know that running getting 150 minutes of running a week helps to produce bmi which ultimately helps to you know decrease your risk of all these other comorbidities or it increases your physical capacity which has been associated with better overall outcomes over the lifespan but what about the here what about the now you know what about being present finding something that you enjoy that you can continue to stick to find a connection to and ultimately give yourself a little bit of meaning especially in the the realm of being physically active exactly what i love about this conversation today is when we talk about running walking weightlifting there may be some people out there who are like you know what i can't run i i just i'm not i don't i've never been a runner i have a bad back or bad knee or you know i just i don't physically can't do it so this provides an opportunity for people to get active in a different way so i i like that we're going to have this discussion discussion and yoga is a big piece of that and just again setting the stage i'm i'm not uh I, I practice yoga regularly as a participant but i'm not a teacher there's probably a lot of additions that can be made to our conversation to give depth to the just the the science to practice the meaning of it all um but we certainly can speak to the 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 flexibility no pun intended of having these different options and and integrating them into a more holistic approach to how you see view and approach your overall health and well-being. Yeah, and I, I, to that point, if there is a teammate out there who is a yoga instructor, reach out to us either through Yammer or through email. Let us know because we would love to have somebody come on and just kind of maybe talk about the backstory of yoga because I know people who are certified in yoga go through like a thousand hours of training. Like it's no joke those instructors to go through. So we'd love to learn more from somebody who's been through it because I, I also am not a yoga instructor. And one of the one of the benefits in the examples we've talked about, um, just highlighting yoga as a practice is, you know, it's a very it's a very individualized experience, right? Like you're not you're not really competing with anyone. You really shouldn't be competing with yourself. And it provides an opportunity to to work in a way that connects in a in a way connects the mind body experience. You know, where you become more present, more present with yourself, more focused on your breathing, more focused on your body, your limitations, but also you know, expanding that view outside of just what you can't do and focusing on what you can do. Again, another way to just shift shift the way you view the world um, and specifically how you view yourself it gives you that opportunity. And I think you know when you're being active and, and when you're alive and you're awake, these are all great things to do, right? Like why not focus on what I can do and what I do well every day as opposed to the other things. And I think yoga is a practice that en enables us to do that. Definitely does, because I know from someone, you know, I, I have I have done yoga. I actually have a really big heart for yoga, so I wish that I was able to do it more. Um, but I know you called it a practice and it absolutely is a practice like you have to do it to get better. And it's interesting when you go to a class or, or take a class the first time and they're talking about a pose and you have no clue what that pose is and you don't know how to do it. The next time that you go, you feel more prepared. And when you nail that particular pose, then you feel like you've really arrived. So it, it's it's an, it's great for physical health, mental health, but then also self-esteem. Self-esteem, absolutely. You know, in, in the fitness industry, it, we tend to overmarket, oversaturate, glorify, oversimplify everything, and really it becomes a means of self-validation. Said another way, I think we think about what's best for others and how we recommend those things because we found what works for us or what we think works should work for us and should work for other people. Um, you know, the beauty of yoga is that it's it's integrative. It's an integrative mind-body experience that affords you the chance to be comfortable in your own skin at your own level. It teaches us to accept ourselves where we are in a given moment. And as a result, it can expand our self-awareness, you know, to, to allow us to be able to practice, to learn, to stay connected and at peace with ourselves. 
I also, in our research for getting ready for this, I found a really cool study that showed physiological benefits to yoga. So they took, um, diff they, it was a study that looked at other studies that had people with cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes, and they actually were able to show a decrease in their fasting glucose and insulin use for individuals who did yoga for 12 months. So I actually thought that was kind of cool as a as just kind of a side. It's not just feel good and stretch out your your legs. You can also really address some chronic conditions. Another important topic we 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 always try to bring up and and make a part of conversation here at the well, Jen. Um so real real good call out there. I think it's also kind of a mixed bag too when we talk about yoga we talk about some of these alternative forms of exercise um, pilates some of the dance classes and things we'll get into in a second but it's always f for folks trying to figure it out and we're always always trying to figure it out but like wherever you are in your journey whether you've got a routine or you're establishing a routine you're like am i gonna run am i gonna walk what am i gonna do do i have to do yoga every day do i have to do and at the end of the day, you know, we have these prescriptions, this 150, not to be too rigid, but step outside of that and say, well, what's working for me? You know, am I really enjoying going and doing a yoga or Pilates class two or three times a week and then alternatively working around that? Or is, is that kind of is that kind of what works for me? And is that what I find sustainable at this point in my life? Right, exactly. And there are individuals were talking about yoga, yoga is fabulous, but there are people who that may not be a great fit for. Um, I, as I told you, I'm one, I love yoga, I've practiced yoga for years and years, but it's no secret I have a back injury that I'm trying to, to fix and yoga is really hard on my back. So I do yoga intermittently. What I find though is Pilates is fabulous. So I bounce in between doing yoga and Pilates at different times throughout, add it speckled into my regular workout. It because the Pilates grabs that core, it works on your structure and is it's just a different type of practice than yoga. I, I found that that's really a good go-to. And there may be individuals out there who are like, you know what, yoga is not my thing. So Pilates could be an option. There are other alternative forms of exercise as well that people might find interesting. Yeah, not a whole lot of historical data that I have personally um, on Pilates. A little bit of experience for myself. Um, definitely works the core. Definitely is a, a, a nice approach to being active and just using my body weight. So I know uh, probably a lot of folks over the last year and a half, two years have really gotten comfortable doing exercise at home and that translates to doing it without equipment. So yoga Pilates have probably been some some nice things you've tried. Um, so I think that continuing to do that and then for those that haven't experienced it and haven't had that chance, you know, dip your toe into it. Find, find, find something that, that might be a little bit different because outside of just the running, the lifting weights, the, the cycling, the swimming, You've got to find ways to stay engaged and not feel like you're being bored by your activity. You know, you got to be excited by it. That's part of that's part of the fun is doing something that you like. Exactly. And for our Greater Charlotte teammates, LiveWell has some partnerships with ClassPass and Active and Fit. So if you're interested in dipping your toe, but you're not ready to fully commit to a, a, a gym membership at Yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, whatever. Use class pass or active and fit. Use those as your a way to get a test run without having to break the bank. And Jen, we've also got um, on our turned up Tuesdays and some of our emails coming out uh, from LiveWell. We've got some great actual yoga videos that are already out. Is that right? Oh my gosh, we do. Um, I'm so glad you said that because we've partnered with Atrium Navicent. They have a certified yoga instructor and we just recorded a Pilates. They have a certified Pilates instructor. So on our streams fitness channel, we have two yoga videos and one Pilates video that's coming. So, and her, her, I actually did her Pilates video with her when she recorded it and it's fantastic. You hear that Charlotte Winston-Salem. You are on the clock. Let's let's do some yoga and Pilates together. Reach out to us. Absolutely. There are some additional um, alternative forms of exercise that, that we, we can look into. Dancing is a great one. And we have some dancing videos 
from actually teammates that we recorded in 2020. Uh, one is a rooftop dance party that's found on our streams channel. And then also we did a Soka dance party, which was really fun. Jill and I participated in that one. So that's another thing is, is doing dancing. There's a new there's a new Apple commercial for the Apple Watch Series 6. It's been like playing on my TV lately. And it's this it, it's kind of cute. It's like this girl's like, I'm going to relax this year. And then she goes, I want to run. I'm going to relax and I'm going to swim. I'm going to relax. I'm going to dance. I'm going to get a black belt. And then she's like, are you relaxing? <laughs> but it just, she. it's great because it talks about all, not just running, walking, lifting weights. She's pretty active in a variety of different ways. And getting back to your your um, point about dancing, dancing's legit. If you've ever done a class, um, you know I I had very little experience dancing except for uh, the traditional. Let me stay in my box. Let me stay in my lane while I, while I go to this uh, school dance or out <laughs> dancing. I, I have since grown some pretty fancy feet, but back in the day, and you know, kind of being around different areas of research and physical activity, come to seeing dancers are just so impressive you know there's so many different places to go different types of dancing that you can perform but it is such a full body all out outside of the artistic experience like from just a physical perspective it's it's impressive it, and it's it takes a lot to do it so it's not just something that oh i'm gonna go to, i'm gonna go do this dance class or i'm gonna go start this dance training it's work and so uh it's a great alternative form to to be physically active it's a lot of fun too. I uh, back in college, a friend of mine, we actually went to a hip hop. It was an aerobics class, but it was a hip hop dance class. It was so much fun. Uh, it, and it's, you know, over the years, I've sort of looked for that. Um, there are some area, some places in our area that offer those types of classes, but Zumba is another one that falls right in line with what we're talking about. Zumba is, was really up and coming about uh, 10 years ago, and it still continues. And it's hard. Zumba's hard. I've struggled. It's, it's technical. It's physical. I, I did one class of Zumba and I'll tell you how how I know I didn't do that well, and not that there should be a you did a good job or not a bad job, but you, people were coming up to me afterwards, like oh, kind of doing the whole you know um, here in the South, bless bless your heart, you did a great. That was such a fun <laughs> class, and immediately my you know heart dropped to my stomach. I was I had the sense that that would be my my first my last Zumba experience, but it's a <laughs> it's a great class, a lot of fun. Uh, it just for me it just it didn't work out, but I tried it. Well, not everything is for everyone. That's what we're talking about here. So that falls in line. Yeah, not everything's for everyone, but getting out there and just trying it. You never know, right? It's like green eggs and ham. You don't know, you don't try your vegetables. How do you how do you know they're not good? That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, and so dancing is another area that's really expanded. You've got Zumba. There's also um, pole fitness or pole dance fitness. You know, that's a that's a, a big a big area of growth in the last few years. Um, a lot of places growing in the, the Charlotte region focus on you know, building the cardiovascular endurance and body strength. And it also, again, creates an area of fun and it's focused fun for me. So you mentioned the pole fit and pole dancing. That is something I have done. It was fantastic. It was so much fun. There are several different studios in the Charlotte area. There's one in Huntersville. There's one off of 77 in South Charlotte. There's there's several different ones. Um, but you want to talk about a workout that was dynamic and hard, but so much fun. I loved it. Sometimes it's the, the different types of challenges that we can get from our, our physical activity routine, not just the running, not just the cycling, you know, the moving, the dancing, the camaraderie that you can build in a group class like that or in a, a group dance class. You know, those things make a big difference. They create an imprint that keeps you coming back for more, keeps you engaged, keeps you happy about what you're doing and ultimately keeps you doing it more, which means you're going to be doing a little bit more today than you did yesterday. And you're going to be doing a little bit more tomorrow than you did today. That's right. And one more I'll throw out there that I have not done, but have had have brought instructors to um, like corporate health fairs and stuff is belly dancing. Belly dancing, a, another a form of dance that, that that has a lot of interest and creates a, a lot of. It's such great core work. 
and it's you want to talk about moving your hips i mean again that's i'm not i don't move my hips quite like that so i have enjoyed watching it but i have not participated but it is so much fun when you see people go into a class like that for the first time and just watching people's faces is is just it's so fun to see this alternative type of exercise and this is part of a larger week right so you know we're not saying do these in the these are in addition to your walking or strength training or whatever, but it's a great way to break up the monotony. And I'll also pose that it's a great way to break up the monotony if you have an established routine, but it's also a great way to start doing something. It can be, it might be the only thing that, that you find of interest and, you know, it might be the thing that keeps you coming back for more. And ultimately, if, if it, this term is, if it becomes sticky, that type of activity, activity itself becomes sticky so you want to find other things to do and you know it, it could be the starting point not necessarily the the way to break things up it can be both Absolutely. yep that's a good point so get started doing something such a great conversation today yeah i enjoy i enjoy the 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 perspective i think it's important i think sometimes we can get so drilled down on this is what it is this is what it has to be and again i think a lot of the the narrative that comes about and being healthy living healthy trying to do the right the right thing is that we're getting that information from from a source that is again trying to 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 self-validate and so validate for yourself what works best and these are some great alternatives so a lot of great alternatives but jen what exactly did we learn today help us get to it so exercise provides many benefits as we've talked about, but when you exercise, it doesn't have to look one particular way. There are alternatives to traditional cardio and strength training that we can get lots of different benefits from. As discussed, yoga is an awesome form of exercise that most people can do even if you have a chronic condition and can help you to manage that chronic condition. Additional forms of alternative exercise, things like Tai Chi dancing, Pilates, belly dancing, pole dancing, those are all different fun forms of exercise that you can look to add to your routine. If you're interested in testing some of these out, connect with ClassPass or Active and Fit through our Live Well website. Um, also on our streams channel on Toned Up Tuesday, that's free. Our Toned Up Tuesday streams channel is completely free for teammates. So that's another great way to sort of try something out. We will post our um, some, some of the examples of the yoga and the dance classes that we've done. We'll put those in our comments. Bottom line, just be active doing something you enjoy and do more today than you did yesterday. Well put, Jen. Teammates, don't forget to visit the Live Well website for access to our Mindfulness and Resilience series, access to the Streams channel, working with the Live Well Health Coach, and of course, access to additional The Well resources. Our next podcast will be airing September 16th, and we will be with Cindy discussing a much needed financial wellness topic, real life retirement. This is sure to be an informative show. Our resources are listed at the end of the show and we'll add links to the programs discussed today in the comments on our streams channel. Looking for more things live well? Not following our streams channel yet? Search The Well on streams in Office 365 or find us on the Live Well website to access all our content. Thanks for listening to The Well today. Stay safe. And live well.